Hi, welcome to AFI Fest 2020 presented by Audi. I'm Claudia Puig, Senior Programmer for AFI Fest. First, I want to thank all the supporters of the festival, our presenting sponsor, Audi, our cultural partner, Alma, and you, our audience. We're here today with the director and star of the wonderful film Wildland, director Jeanette Nordahl and actor Sandra goldberg Kump. Your compelling hybrid of crime thriller and family drama is so engrossing and visually stylish. The characters feel so real. It's focused on a complicated teenage girl, played by Sandra, who goes to live with her aunt and older male cousins. It brilliantly explores a destructive familial cycle. And it's also a meticulous study on grief that questions the value of loyalty in such an intriguing and thoughtful manner. Thank you for your fantastic film. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for the kind words on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask the origin of your story because I read that it, you came up with the idea for the film. So how did you come up with that idea? Actually, it came up quite mutually between me and the screenwriter Ingeborg uh, Topsu. We had worked together previously on a short film called Nylon, which was also about a family uh, that we enter through a teenager and have a, a, a clean view of the family, if, if you can put it like that. And we knew we wanted to work together. It was my first feature, Wildland is my first feature. And I wanted to work with family. So it kind of, it kind of uh, started with Nylon, with the short film, and then it developed into Becoming Wildland. And we took, we knew we wanted to work with the genre, uh, make it our own way into this family, just kind of using the mafia genre to heighten all the stakes a bit more in the family. So that's where it started. And this is a very ambitious first feature. You mentioned that it's your first. Um, so that's, have you, is it a genre that you have been drawn to? The sort of the crime or the family drama? What Was it the, the, the melding of the two that drew you? It, I'm definitely much more interested in the family dynamics. Uh, I, I think that was always what, which, what, what I wanted to explore with this film. Using the genre is just the way it's a nice package to talk about the things I wanted to talk about a bit more clearly, like I said before, with raising the stakes a bit more. Exactly. So the house is just much more dangerous in a very clear way because the family is dealing with crime. And so that was, it was, I think it was just a way to speak a little bit more clearly to the audience about the thematics that I wanted to explore, the need to belong, um, the, the family circle, the circle of life, social heritage, if it's possible to break free from the path that has been laid out in front of you. And that was, that was what we wanted to discuss. Fascinating. Sandra, this film is, is part coming of age story for your character. And of course the, the family drama that we we're just talking about and the gangster thriller. What was it about the part that you played of Ida that, that drew you to want to play her? Um, well, I think it was the first time, it was my first like actual part in film and wow. it was the first time that I read a part that I didn't just want just to get a part. I really just wanted to play this character and I wanted to be a part of the story. And I think she was so interesting from, to me as an actor because she, she doesn't really have the words to express anything with and and I just found it very interesting to, to kind of play with that, um, that thing of like conveying so much without using the words. And I just felt like it was a beautiful story about some themes that we can all relate to, but it's maybe set in a very, very kind of bizarre and very extreme situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You do that so well, you convey so much with your facial expressions with your body language in that part. Um, and we, you are sort of the audience surrogate. We're, we're in your shoes, you're the emotional center of the film. But that had to be challenging, especially uh, considering it's, you know, you're, you haven't been doing this for 40 years. Um, so how do you get into 
character? Did you spend time thinking about her backstory? Did you talk with Jeanette a lot? Did you rehearse? How did it, how did it go? So before I even got the part, like during the casting process, I, I got some, some lessons from the casting director, which helped quite a lot. And we also talked, me and Jeanette and Ingeborg, the writer. And well, I just kind of approached it as it went on. I mean, I, I kind of just, I, I mean, I was 18 at the time we, we were shooting. I was 17, I think. And um, so I hadn't done a lot. So, I mean, I just looked at the other actors and kind of reacted to whatever they were doing and just think, um, I just learned how to be present. Mm. Yes, yeah. that's everything. Yeah. Well, you did it so well, but um, if you hadn't, you know, the film hinges on, on your character. And if you hadn't been convincing for us, then, you know, I, it would have been a much different film, I think. Um, Jeanette, how did you know when you met Sandra that she was the right person to play the character? Sandra was actually the first person I had in for uh, the auditions I was doing. I don't cast a lot of people usually, so we had... I had chosen to see six girls to begin with within the first audition and Sandra was the first one who came and she was a bit early uh, and I was a bit early. It sounds like, a, it, yeah, it was very, it was very, it was very much meant to be. I think she, she came up the stairs and I was standing there waiting for her and I just, yeah, she had, she had everything that I was looking for in Ida. Like you say, uh, when you have a film like this, where everything is so much, you, I mean, we experience the entire film through Ida. She's our way into the story. She's our way into the family. We discover everything with her. So, and she is a difficult character to play because if we, we she doesn't have a lot of uh, words. Um, so we knew that we had to find someone who would be able you would still be curious to know and that you would kind of understand what she was going through without having her say all of these words to describe it. So I was very, very lucky that Sandra kind of just fell into the film like she did. I mean, it's, it's pure luck. I was just very lucky. And, and of course, when you, when you are, she was the first one who came in I think I, we did the casting process for about three months before I gave her the part to make sure that she would be able to, to do all the also a bit more intense scenes that are in the film. Did you rehearse also before shooting? Yes, yes. Uh, I rehearsed on set. So we did on set uh, rehearsals. Uh, we got all the scenes blocked down. I think, I think, yeah, the majority of the scenes were quite rehearsed actually and and I think it just made everyone feel quite comfortable in the fact that when we, were, when we were finally on set everyone could play with it also the ones who are not that experienced so I think it, it, it kind of gave everyone a really good place to start while we were shooting. What I, one of the your directorial choices that I loved was that as the tension escalates and and violence, you know, we're, we're tense and we know violence is about to happen. You sort of focus on her subtle reactions and a lot of the violence is inferred and we don't actually see a lot of it. Um, I thought that was such an interesting choice. What motivated you to approach it that way? Well, from the, I think throughout both in the developing of the story and develop, developing the visual style for the film and how we would tell it, it was always about trying to turn things a bit upside down to say um, the things you really want to see, the expressiveness, the violence, all of these things that are usually connected to the genre. I really wanted to say, what if we don't see that? What if we see the reaction to it? Which I think is much more interesting. Much more. Um, so it was trying to focus on the, the reactions instead of the actual gore. And I think that gives a certain unease that makes things that can may make things very uncomfortable uh, and and create a different kind of tension. But it, it, I mean, it's it's also embedded in the script. I mean, I know like usually you hit the third act, everything is gonna go 
even faster, much like it's going to go more and more and more. And we want it to go the opposite way. We go, okay, we enter the third act, we're going to make it even more quiet. So you think you're going to pick up the pace, but we're going to do the opposite. And instead, just focus on the characters and see their true self unfold, which is where the true danger is, I would say. Absolutely. I love the idea of exploring that whole destructive cycle if there is sort of a cyclical nature to dysfunction and to violence. Um, and did you and Sandra talk about that on set or were, were there conversations about that? Or um, Sandra, what, I'd love, love to know your perspective on it. Uh, on the violence part? Yeah, and just the cyclical nature of, you know, familial, like the family. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, we, we did kind of, but, but it's a very weird family where a kiss can be as violent as a slap in the face, I think you said at some point, Jeanette. Um, it's very true, so, so you, you kind of never know when, when you're going to get a kiss or you're going to get um, slap in the face, um, which is a very kind of, it's a very uneasy thing to know. And I think just having that in the back of your head kind of made the scenes a bit more interesting because you were kind of always in this um, yeah, situation where you, you really don't know when the bomb is going to explode. It kind of feels like a ticking bomb throughout the whole thing, I'd say. Yeah. Totally. As an audience member, you do. You feel you're, you're kind of, your footing is unsure and you feel unnerved and you don't know what's going to happen and you especially see that in um that your aunt's character um Sidse Babet Knudsen uh she's so unpredictable one minute she could be warm and loving and the next minute cruel or you know you just um that was such a fascinating character uh and you really felt for for Ida and also her sense of um loyalty uh, that to me that was really interesting her choice to go with the family loyalty um what did you what did you kind of make of that as you read the script well i mean uh, kind of well to be honest i i do really understand her i mean some people have come up to me and said like oh why didn't she just like tell the police that they did it or um or why didn't she just go kill them or I don't know, save her as I mean, um, but let's be honest, like there's very few of us who would actually like choose to be alone in this world and have a hard time rather than just have a hard time, but to be part of a community, like maybe it's not the best community, but you at least have somebody who loves you and somebody who takes care of you. Yeah, they're your people. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Right. And she was orphaned or, or her father was out of the picture and of course her mother was gone. Um, she'd endured so much at such a tender age. Yeah. Um, I, I was also curious about if there were any elements that were based on anything real, any real life situations that you drew from Jeanette or that uh, your co-screenwriter drew from? Uh, it's not, it's not per se based on any real story. We did, um, we did uh, research, of course. We talked about uh, uh, police officers who worked on the countryside, primarily here in Denmark, um, and discussed what is the organized crime, like what is the, what is the main thing people are working with. So debt, collect, debt collecting came up as one of the, the number one things. And then um, there was just this feeling, well, that, I mean, that there is a lot of this petty crime, a lot of people doing all of these tiny little things. I mean, the family, they don't live in a big mansion. It's not the Sopranos. It's not the Godfather. They're just doing crime to pay their bills and to get a pair of shoes and to get food on the table, food on the table. I mean, that's, that's basically it. And that was, that is, based on the research we did. That's fascinating because we do see so much of, you know, the sort of the Sopranos and that whole Godfather, that whole, when we think of gangster or any kind of organized crime, we think in the very sort of extreme terms and we don't, and we also never see it, 
you know, told through the story of a woman, and particularly a young woman, a, a girl. Um, mm -hmm. And that's something that felt very fresh. Um, I, mean, I think from the, very, from the very beginning, I think we knew that we wanted to have a young female character in front uh, where it's not about her sexuality or about her first kiss or about uh, kind of, uh, you know, all of these that are so becoming of age uh, classics um, that you could actually have a young female character in front and it's about survival. It's about something that's basic for all of us. I mean, that was, um, that was definitely something we wanted to explore early on. Yeah, and the sense of family, and as Sandra said, of belonging and feeling that you belong to a, a sense of community. And yet there were those little moments of, you know, where she had her kiss and, you know, where, you, where she felt like there were moments where she could just be a, a, a young person and mm -hmm. not, you know, uh, I, I love the way you wove it all together. It felt, the characters felt believable. Uh, which is not true of necessarily of, you know, as good as Sopranos or The Godfather could be. They're not people we necessarily relate to or feel mm -hmm. we would know. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. um, and, and I also, you know, that your choices to not show the violence, particularly, this is, people will be watching this Q&A after they see the film. So right. the, the ending comes as a, as a shock. Um, right. <laughs> and you, the way you handled, did you think a lot about how to visually have that? Because to me, that's such an important moment. Yes, yes. I mean, the, the, the suicide shot, the take that's in the film is take 17. So it's definitely, I mean, it's, a, it, it's I knew I wanted it in a very specific way. And the way that, that, uh, that ended up in the film, and I'm very happy with it. I knew I wanted to be a shockful experience. I mean, it was a way to speak very clearly to the audience and say, okay, we're talking about social heritage here. And we're talking about the fact if it's possible to break free from this path. And I'm not saying I have any answers here for what is right and what is wrong. All I can do is kind of uh, ask these questions and people can debate it afterwards. But it was very important for me to say, okay, there's, there's going to be one way out. And this is the way that David takes. And even though he escapes, the family is still going to continue with the birth of his child. And, and I mean, um, Carla, who plays Anna in the film, she saw, she was also, I think she was 19 when we filmed. <clears throat> and obviously she doesn't have any, children so we had to do this scene which was um, obviously very intense for her to do but I think she managed amazingly and I, I, I just I, I wanted to have this feeling of doing a birth where you feel like the brakes have been pulled you know like she just doesn't want it and and uh, yeah it gives it gives a clear, I think it has a clear voice and I hope the audience feel the same. That's, that what, what was what I was aiming for at least. Well, it certainly seems like you succeeded. What have you heard? Because you have shown the film, I think it's shown in Berlin already, right? At the film festival. And yeah. So what have you heard from audience, both of you, um, from people who've seen it? What, what kinds of reactions have you gotten? I think I got overwhelmingly reactions. I mean, at, the, at Berlin, it was right before the, the, the the every the world closed down. Mm -hmm. so we were actually able to meet the audience. We had a lot of great screening with tons of people, and it was very wonderful to hear their thoughts on it. And I think some people really felt like we spoke quite clearly to them, and they could they they felt very moved by it. Other people said, "We have free choice. We have all the possibilities in the world. We, I mean." We can, we can get out, I would be able to leave this family. And I, I really enjoy these discussions uh, either way they go. So as long as people feel passionate about it, I'm very satisfied. I love that, that films that inspire that kind of discussion. To me, those are the best kinds of films. Where people are That's what's so great about film festivals, especially in person, but where people can talk about them either with a filmmaker or among themselves and they're, they're inspired to do that by yeah. a thoughtful film. Sandra, what did you hear when you were you there in Berlin as well? Yeah, I was. Yeah, 
well, people were great about it. Like, um, I think it was just great to see people being moved by it and, and yeah, just coming up to me and the rest of the cast and Jeanette and everybody and, and just thanking us and really appreciating what we've been working on. I think that was just great because we kind of, I've, I think it kind of meant a lot to me because I know that these people didn't owe me anything. So, so I felt like it was very genuine when people complimented what we've done. Were you um, inspired by any other uh, films or performances when thinking about the character of Ida? Did, did you go back and maybe watch some things or, or even maybe something you'd read in sort of... Well, not really, it? not really, no. We just I drew really, upon you. Yeah, I wish I could say something very clever, but I just can't. No, that's, that just shows what a wonderful actor you are. <laughs> Thank you. That's amazing. And going back to the to your the character who the aunt and her fierce sort of dual nature, because um, we tend to think of someone as warm is one thing and malevolent and or you know who's criminal. You know, we don't think that those two things can exist together. Um, and I think she embodied that duality in such an intriguing way. Uh, Jeanette, did you sort of? How did that character come about? And did you, was it developed by Sidse as well? Was there improvisation that occurred there? Yes, I think, um, I mean, Bodil as a character, the matriarch of the family was never a villain in my eyes. I think she does everything to the best of her ability. I, she does everything out of a pure heart, even the ma manipulative, um, horrific things she does. It comes from a good place. Um, she teaches her children what she knows. And it goes back to what our thematics is. I mean, there is no evil people in this family. I loved all of these characters equally. I think they're wonderful. They're just really struggling to do the right thing. Um, so I, ha I mean, when, when we were creating Bodhi, when we were developing the story, I was actually, I was pregnant with my first daughter. And I thought a lot about the power of the mother while I was pregnant. I thought a lot about what do we actually pass on? And do I have any choice in the things I want to pass on and the things that I don't want? Maybe especially the things that I don't want to pass on. And, and I think these, these ideas just kind of is embedded in Bodil as a character because these were the thoughts that I had while we were, were developing it. Um, as soon as Sisa came on board, we, it, it just kind of, I think it just transformed, she just raised the bar. Um, I knew that Sisa, she has this very loving presence. It's very difficult not to just love her and and she, she kind of brought that into the family she's a lot of fun and fun to work with as well um so she has this genuine warmth that she kind of just that she just uh yeah embraced the, the family with on screen as well and i think the warmer we made her uh the more we could push her manipulative behavior behavior forward. Um, and I mean, creating her, creating her look, I, it, was, it was such a big part of creating how Bodil ended up becoming. And Caesar had tons of ideas of how all the men to the different boys, um, they all have three different fathers. She had all of this backstory we talked a lot about mm -hmm. and we put into the different, um, to the different boys, which were a lot of fun. That must have been. There's such a great chemistry and camaraderie among all the family members. Did, did you all, Sandra, spend a lot of time together to like offset or how did, how did you achieve that sense of, of chemistry? Because it felt like you, were, you really were a family. Yeah, yeah. It, it kind of still feels like we are, um, which is great. Um, we, we stayed in a few summer houses like right next to each other and I think one time a week one house would make dinner for everybody and would go 
eat ice cream basically after every night we finish shooting and just hang out and yeah yeah, that definitely comes through. Um, th there's not a lot of dialogue either. I, I, that felt very, uh, it was interesting because there's a lot conveyed without a lot of dialogue. Was that something you felt strongly about um, Jeanette in, in terms of telling the story? Yes, yes. I think a lot of, I mean, I think the audience is much more clever then, then, I mean, I don't have to say a lot before they understand what I mean. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think the joy of cinema is that it's a visual media. So you have, you can, you can say a lot just in very few, in, with very few um, details. And I think, um, yeah, I don't think, I don't think I need that much dialogue. Uh, yeah. That's a perfect note to to finish up on here, uh, the joy of cinema. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for, for being a part of this. Um, we really appreciate it and it's wonderful to meet you. And thank you to everyone watching. Please tell your friends that the film is available to screen until the end of the festival, which is October 22nd. We'd love to hear from you on uh, social media, hashtag AFI Fest, and join us for more great films and virtual events at fest.afi.com. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.